will come back as modern attack has just fixed the ghosting issue which is produced by newcomb nice dlss g2 fsr 3 model indiana jones and the great circle this mod is completely free you can download it from its github page works only on rtx gpus at the moment dlss enabler and optiscaler mods are not compatible with this game in this video i'll be showing you the setup process for the mod on my windows pc that has a ryzen 5700 xcd processor and an rtx 2070 super gpu big thanks to optiscaler community member vlad sir for sharing the latest version of the mod with the community i'll give the link to this website in the description just click on this link this page will open up just click on the download icon here this is build version 0.110 of newcom nice mod released in january 2025 it also includes a debugger. I'll show you how to use it. We'll also show you how to manually update the version of DLSS subscaler. Just download version 3.8.10 from Tech Power of website. Click on download here. Click on any of these servers. Download will start. I'll be using the mod with the PC Game Pass version of the game. Big thanks to Keymailer and Xbox for providing me with a free monthly subscription of PC Game Pass. With this subscription, we get access to hundreds of games. We can play these games for as long as we want until our subscription expires. Games from first party Microsoft Studio and even third party studios are included with this subscription. Even EA Play is a part of it. We also get a small discount on some games being sold on Microsoft Store. In India, Microsoft even supports UPI mode of payment. First, I'll show you the mod setup process. Just extract the mod's contents. Open its archive file. Copy all of the files present inside this archive file. Go back. Paste. Now just copy the highlighted files, these two DLL files, need to paste them in the games install directory, open PC Game Pass app, click on my library, select Indiana Jones, click on the three dots here, click on manage, click on files, click on browse, open the games install folder, there it is, open content folder, Paste the mod files here. You basically need to paste them alongside the game's exe file. There it is. Now I'll manually update DLSS Subscaler. Open the Upscaler's archive file. Copy the DLL file present here. Open the game's install directory. Browse. Install folder. Content. Streamline. Paste the file here. A file with the same name is already present in this directory. We just need to overwrite it. You can check the file's version 3.8.10. Now make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling setting is enabled on your PC. Right click anywhere in the desktop area. Then click on display settings. Click on graphics. Click on change default graphics settings. From here enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If your monitor supports variable refresh it. Enable this setting as well. Now I'll enable VSync from NVIDIA control panel. Click on Manage 3D settings. Click on Program settings. From this drop down bar, select Indiana Jones. There it is. Scroll down to the end. Enable VSync from here. My monitor is G-Sync compatible, so I'll enable G-Sync. Click on Setup G-Sync here. Enable the following settings. Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible. Enable for full screen mode. Enable setting for the selected display model. Apply the changes. In case the game crashes at launch, when you run it for the first time with the mod installed, try disabling DLSS frame generation and path tracing setting from the game's configuration file. I was not required to do this step. Path tracing is disabled by default on my GPU. It's RTX 2070 Super. But I'll still show you these steps. Just open C drive. Open users folder. Open the folder whose name is the same as your PC's username. Open saved games folder. Open machine games folder. Open the great circle folder. Open base folder. Open this dot local file, the great circle config. You can open it using notepad. From here you need to set R underscore streamline DLSS G mode to zero. It's set to 1. This means it's enabled. Setting it to 0 disables it. Add this line of text at the end. RT underscore path tracing enabled. It's set to 0. Basically disabled. 
click on file click on save close we are ready to run the game i'll be using a custom afterburner overlay to show you the performance metrics in game video settings display mode set to borderless window full hd resolution we sync off motion blur and chromatic aberration disabled sharpening level set to 20 optional film grain disabled depth of field and depth of field anti-lasing enabled here yeah, texture pool size set to low my gpu has only 8 gpu of vram and this game consumes a lot of vram i have set most of the settings to high motion blur quality set to low volumetric quality set to medium no high setting is available hair quality set to medium vegetation animation quality set to ultra upscaling set to tlss using the upscaler's quality preset dlss frame generation disabled for the time being i'll test the game in the city of vatican show you the base fps first base performance we are in yeah, here fps is around 80 i have equipped my bandage haven't enabled frame generation yet there is no ghosting around the equipped item Yeah, there was a hitch there. It's due to the checkpoint. I activated. Guess I better get going. Okay, so now I'll enable frame generation. 80 to 90 FPS. Hitting the GPU bottleneck here. CPU load is on 60%. On. Back to the game. Yeah, FPS increased to around 130. I can observe the added amount of smoothness. The mod is working. And just check out the equipped item, our bandage. No ghosting is produced around it. This is amazing. Game's hard elements are not flickering. Even the subtitles are not flickering. Oh no! I alerted everyone. Nukem 9's mod works very nicely now. And thanks to Nitec, they fixed the ghosting issue. Exit the game. Just go to the directory where you extracted the mods files. Right here. You need to copy this INI file dlsg underscore 2 underscore fsr3. Paste it in the games install directory where you pasted the mod files. Right here. Open the INI file. Set enable debug overlay to 1. This will enable it. It's set to 0 by default. Disabled. Click on file, click on save, close. Launch the game. Just enable DLSS frame generation from the end game settings and the debug overlay will work automatically as you can see. Displays are working properly for all of the images. No hard elements are visible in the bottom middle image. The display should not be black for any image. The color palette should be exactly the same for both bottom middle and bottom right images. Everything seems to be working properly. In order to disable the debug overlay, you can just delete its INI file or just set its configuration setting to 0. So that's it for the video guys. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.